story i can't think of anything right now uh let me see okay so there was a time it was a night uh there was a guy that i knew i can't remember his name but i called him uh something mick 
uh, what's that guy's name? It was Bon Jovi. So, his, whatever his name, Bon Jovi, or stupid Bon Jovi. Mark Bon Jovi, or whatever his name was. Kurt, Chris Bon Jovi, Kurt Bon Jovi, I don't know. But he's a really good looking guy. Hey, he's a good looking guy. Here you go. Godfather of rock and roll. You know, look at a good looking guy. You know, okay, so. All right, so here's a story. Uh, Gazaris. I played the Troubadour hundreds of times. I just posted a picture of one of the first times I played. But through the 80s and early 90s, I played the Troubadour hundreds of times. And then the Whiskey, and then the Roxy, and then Gazaris. So... I was going, me and my drummer, when I was in Trick or Treat, and we still thought we had a band, because we didn't know Mandy was getting ready to stick his uh, foozle up his ass. That's his poodle that died. <laughs> you know why? Because he stuck it up his ass. So anyways, Mandy Lyon. Uh, I'm talking to friggin', you know, me and the drummer are getting ready to talk to Bill Gazzari. He's standing outside, you know, in the parking lot talking to... Peter Chris of Kiss, and I could care less, you know. I'm mm. freaking Michael D of Trick or Treat, you know. I thought at this point I'm bigger than this guy. He's he's nothing, and he's trying to beg Bill to let him play his new band Chris with a girl singer or something, something stupid. I remember. I'm like, oh gosh, come on! I want to go and do a line and you know go to the Rainbow and get a few drinks. And, you know, Bill's talking, and Rudy, my drummer, he's like, wait a minute, man, I'll get his attention. So he goes up, and he's standing behind Bill Gazzari, and he's peeing on the wall. There's like, this is, here's Gazzari, here's the wall, Here, or here's Bill Gazzari, here's the wall to Gazzari. He's peeing, then he pee. he turns this way, he starts peeing on Bill Gazzari's leg until he gets his attention and then he starts peeing back on the building. He's like, hey, what the, what the fuck, man? Hey, what the fuck? What are you doing peeing on me, you stupid, stupid ass kid? And goes to hit Rudy and he's like, hey, you know, for, uh, what do you call him, uh, skid tramp or whatever. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He goes, what did you, what, what the hell are you, what, let's go in, whoever you guys are, you're banned for life. I'm like, oh, shit. So, that didn't happen. And I'd never played Gazars and I didn't want to. I just wanted to check that off my list. So that was the first band without even getting in there. Second one, Fatal Attraction plays there. Uh, they just did that stupid movie, and so Bill redid the whole place, and the monitors are brand new on the stage and all this crap. And, you know, Fatal Attraction, blood, fangs, all that. And, you know, there's the balcony. So Trey takes a pumpkin carved out, filled with blood, stage blood, goes into the back up on the balcony and throws it onto the stage in front of the drums, and it just, boom! Blood everywhere and pumpkin. Looked cool. Got out all over the monitors. Bill was pissed. We did one song, boop, out. So we got banned. Again. So that was what, 89. 92. I'm doing a Randy Rose tribute band. I look different. Just normal. Long hair, playing bass. Got another guy playing guitar, a friend of mine singing, and a drummer that uh, likes to drop his sticks all the time. Like, if you didn't know a part, if he get, like, you know, didn't know something, he'd accidentally drop a stick and then pick it up and I'm like, yeah, that's not, you know that's screwing everything up but he keep in time it's just, dude don't drop the stick, learn the part I think it was, I don't know what it was, it was something in one of the first two songs, you know, I don't know, Crazy Strain something like that, so we're playing and we actually did pretty good, so at that point, if you just played there and drew people and they liked you, you'd get a star in the uh, in Gazaris. 
so Blizzard got a star. Fatal Attraction had one. I don't know if they took it down after we were banned or not, but yeah, because Fatal Attraction sold out the show there. So all these people's like, we had a star. Dude, who didn't have a star in there? And then when you walked into, when you still walk into the rainbow, there's all these pictures. I used to be like in five or six of them because I was there all the time and I was a draw. Believe it or not, this guy <laughs> didn't look like this. I looked like that guy. You know, different guy. I don't think it, you really need a picture, but if you do, I'll get it for you. <laughs> So this guy could get in to the rainbow or whatever, wherever he wanted, free, all the time, any club, because I played every club, and I was the one booking the shows, so I'd get in everywhere. But I had, there's like five pictures of me when you'd walk in. Now there's nothing, because the guy that owned it, Mario, the guy that ran it when I we used to go there, dead. So it's like a, it's just like a museum, and the food isn't that good either, Rainbow. So, so that's the story. Is I got banned twice, but I ended up playing there again, anyways, with the uh, tribute band, which nobody was doing at the time. It was like me or Blizzard, the Randy Rose tribute, first tribute band, and then we would play with Cold Gin or Led Zepp again and ba Slack Babbitt. That was the last show we did out in uh, that way, towards uh, where Mal Michael Anthony lives, not San Dimas, but that, that direction. And we played this club, Blizzard did, with Slack Babbitt, and we sold it out. I mean, it was packed. There were people screaming. The band, Slack Babbitt, who opened for us, were right in the front just screaming because... Our guitar player, Ruben, was so flipping good. He was exactly like Rain. He was almost better because he just, he had no mistakes. It was like listening to the record, but better. Because he'd throw in cool little stuff. You'll see it. It's out there. I mean, I put a thing on YouTube of a rehearsal we did. And right there you can tell, you know, it's, holy crap, this guy's good. So, and the bass playing is very good. So there's a story. There's that, and there's another one where I was, uh, parked, me and my friend went to the Rainbow, and then afterwards we went to that street, you know, that real steep street that's by the, uh, bank, or that big tall building, the 9,000 building, or whatever the hell it was. There's that steep street right next to it, my, I was parked there with my truck, I had a little Chevy S10. Well, the guy in front of me had let his uh he he just his car was resting on my truck so if i pulled away his car would move it wasn't in gear and the brake wasn't on i'm like what an idiot so i put it in park and i had my friend pull the truck out and there wasn't any cars until the end of the street and there was three cars at the end of the block that's a long block. So I went up. I'm like, this guy's a jerk. So I'm going to let the car, like, you know, roll down and, and go across the street and hit the curb or something. I don't know. Just be a dick. So I put it back in a neutral, and the car starts going down the hill straight. I'm like, holy shit. And my friend's like, dude, dude, it's going to hit that car. I'm like, I know, I know. And this thing's like, it hit the car so hard. It went wham the wheels went up in the air about 10 feet boom bam just completely demolished both cars i'm like i didn't mean to do that but what the fuck man so that was pretty cool got in the truck and you know we were all jacked up and went home i think i picked somebody up and then i went home but, uh, yeah, it's, it's like every night we go down there, some crazy thing. It's like, so it's like you tell stories. It's like, which one? There's another one. Well, no, I won't tell you that one. That's too too graphic. But there's so many stories in that building right across the street from the Rainbow, that big black building in the elevator. Like, uh, what was that song? 
that uh, Aerosmith did, uh, whatever. That elevator saw more action than, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a, than a whorehouse and, and then the bunny ranch or whatever. It was just me. You just go there with a girl, hit the elevator to go up. I knew a guy on like the sixth floor or seventh floor. He was always like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll, I'll manage Ben. I'll do your stuff. And he'd lay out a bunch of coke and you'd do that and nothing would ever happen. But, you know, you could say, yeah, I'm going to see that guy. I can't remember his name. He, he's a fat guy. He was a fat, ugly guy that was in that movie, uh, Decline of the Western Civilization Mental Year. Big, fat, loser, pr promoter, he called himself. He's nobody. So, I usually take girls over there, hit stop, and ta -da, you get your private room for you know, however long. And it wasn't 10 seconds to love like freaking Molly Crew. It was more like, you know, 10 minutes. Anyways, elevator. So, you know, we would uh, read books. See, that's my code for reading books. <laughs> so I'd read books with these ghosts. There you go. So now you get an explanation about my shark, the playable, great sounding one, right? <laughs> And some bad guitar playing, bad isn't bad and bad isn't good, and a couple of stories. Eh. I'll try to think up more because the guy that's gonna that was gonna help co-write that thing with me, I think he's gonna move. So I need to find somebody else to help me write this book. Either that or get it done fast. I'll put it on video and send it to the guy, and he can work it out himself. Because I don't know what to do. How do you put these stories together? Because there's so many of them. The sea hag story, the elevators, there's several elevator stories. There's a million rainbow stories. There's a bunch of Roxy stories. You know, if you get up into that stupid on the rocks, oh my gosh. All you'd see was strung out uh, those young movie star guy and chicks, you know, the brat pack idiots. They were always up there trying to get chicks, and they couldn't. Because they were so whacked out on drugs that, you know, I was just like, meh, you know, you two, come on, let's go, huh, let's go, go, go. And they were out of their minds on drugs, so it was stupid. Like uh, the guy that's got AIDS. Oh, yeah. But I got tested for everything. I am clean. Thank goodness I got out of it clean. I mean, I got a bunch of stuff, but I had my own card. I go get tested like two times a month. Boy, I hope nobody sees this that <laughs> shouldn't, but hey, that was the friggin' days, man. That was rock and roll. That was it. You, I lived it. I did it, man. I wasn't just some poser that tries to get his picture on a, on a fake documentary that's completely inaccurate. And Oh, yeah, look at, look at, uh, that's proof that I was nobody and I played a, a club twice. Man, I had, was in, I formed myself. I formed three bands that did very well. First one, Stiletto. We toured the crap out of Southern California. The, they call it the 86 Hell Tour because it was in the summer and we played everywhere we could in Southern California. Every club there was, including the Waters Club and all. And that even, because Tony would always have a bunch of snow. And everybody would get snow blind, and I would did it once, and I didn't never did it again because it was horrifying to play that way. So I'd wait till after. But we were there, Waters Club, and if you know the Waters Club, there's a waterfall behind the stage with you know water, and the drummer Daz Bash, who went on to fame and nothingness in Paradise, you know Paradise. I'm up there playing. And I got this long earring, and it's like this. And it gets stuck in the friggin' string. I'm like, oh, no. And so I turn back to him, and he's laughing his ass. <laughs> he's also, you know, skiing down a hill and playing drums. 
And I'm like, dude, not funny, you know? So I'm trying to unhook it, and this girl finally comes up and unhooks it. And I think it was my ex-wife. And so Daz is laughing so hard, he flips over backwards and falls into the water. Why would you have a waterfall at a club where rock metal bands are playing and they're crazy? I mean, Slayer played there. And you got a waterfall? No, no, bad idea. Especially with the electronics and stuff, but he was a drummer, you know, drummers, they hit things. That's all they do. So there's another story. Because that was happening, and then when that happened, you know, we had to stop for a minute. And it was very quiet, because it would separate. There was one side where, like, all the Marines and stuff that were stationed down there by San Pedro, they would sit on this side, on my side, and then the other people would be in the other area. And the singer, Rudy, who was a drummer in Trick or Treat, who was a singer in Stiletto, he's like, get up, you stupid army guys. I'm like, they're not army, they're Marines, and don't do that. He's like, dude, watch. He gets a big... A, Budweiser, I remember the friggin' bottle, throws it at him. It hits a table, you know, shatters, and they're just, they just sit there looking. And I'm like, we're dead. We're going to die. We're going to die. Because there was like 50 of them, and they didn't do anything. They were not into the makeup. Even though we sounded pretty heavy, they just were not into it. They were, I don't know, they were just there. I don't know why. Just to get out. And, yeah, so we played that show, grabbed our equipment and girls, and went straight out the side door into a van and boop. Yeah, I remember I was the first one out because I didn't want to get beat up, and I figured they'd kill Rudy anyway since he was the one that, you know, threw the bottle at him. But eventually, he actually got away. I don't know how I did it. So there's another story. I actually found a picture of that show before we went on. We were all so... But I was mad because... The whole band was wasted, except for me, but I get my stupid earring caught in the guitar strings. So, that's what I'm saying. We weren't hair bands. We didn't play guitar with our hair, but sometimes our jewelry did get in the way. Like, I, I had a long fingernail and a star pierced. Like a little earring, star earring pierced on my long fingernail. And I thought that was cool, but I got caught in the guitar string, screwed it up. Out of time. All right? So that's it. So never play with a long pinky fingernail with a star earring on it because oh. it'll get caught in your guitar string, I guarantee it. Boop. Boop. Late.